the network. We are back in the crib and we have a very special guest in the building. We got brand man Sean in the building. He's a marketing maverick i call him a gen- I, I think he's a genius you know and to be honest, I, I, and i don't uh, say that i don't say that lightly uh i've been following uh brand man sean on youtube uh for quite some time now and uh i've i even have value in kind of following him and, and really you know seeing the tips that he's giving uh, artists these days so sean talk to the people welcome to the crib how's everything man what's up what's up man everything is great I'm glad to be on, man. Appreciate you having me on your platform, Vince. Of course, man. Of course, man. And and you have been helping countless artists for years now. So I wanted to, you know, kind of get, you know, you on the show to kind of talk to, uh, you know, talk to you about like your journey and like how you actually got to this point because you're in a you're in a you're in a really dope spot in your career right now because you just launched Brandman yeah. Brandman uh, Network. Yeah. Sure. As far as on this end, like you're you're in a definitely an adult place. So I want to start from YouTube. So when did you start your YouTube channel? I'll start here. I had a music festival that had been running for about three years, annually bringing about a thousand people out, mm-hmm. and we had grown that. That took a lot of energy. We grew it from zero to one thousand. That first one thousand, pretty much with no money spent on marketing, but just understanding and hacking algorithms on Instagram and all that kind of good stuff at the time. But you know, that's, that's what I do. Right. Um, and then some real world promotions as well. And in that time, I'd always been around, um, artists and helping out artists, branding, consulting, things of that nature. But I had to put so much more energy into a lot of other things that I was working in that it was just an area I was giving value in without making it a priority in terms of my own personal business but then in a lull when we decided to not do the festival for a period of time and there were some artists that i was working with helping to build their brands but you know artists hit their creative walls at a certain point right Mm -hmm. Uh, anybody who's i i I i've never considered myself a manager but anybody who's been through a management experience right or even a lot of artists would be familiar with a period where artists are going for it, going for it, or trying to gather some things, but the actions never add up or and for whatever reason. And then on top of that, they want to reinvent themselves, right? So mm-hmm. I was working, the, the, the most, the closest I was working on a day-to-day, or let's just say week-to-week more so with artists, they had even taken a break. Mm-hmm. And, I, and in that period, I had so many people continue to come to me uh, for advice because people would hear about the things that I would be helping other people execute. So it was all very, very much so a word of mouth. And it got to the point where I was like, you know what? Let me just do this on YouTube. Because I was in a period where I was taking a break from all that other stuff. And I was doing so much for other people. I said, you know, okay, let me, what, what can I do that'll be interesting on my, in my uh, extra time? Mm-hmm. And then I came up with the idea to try doing YouTube. I did YouTube really just to answer people's questions. Right. Like, so I don't have to answer them over and over again, break them down as detail. My mm-hmm. very first video was like that Fetty Wap video. Yeah. Right. It was like just breaking down conceptually. So then if I show, if, I, if people ask me a question, I can say, hey, man, check this video out. And it was very much that. I wasn't super heavily thinking I want to be this YouTube guy or anything like that. It was mm-hmm. just like, yo, man, like, I, I kind of want to help some folks out. People always tell me that artists need a platform to learn some stuff from. I don't know everything, but I just but I I know what I like to talk about and what I know. So let me share some of that stuff. And that's kind of where it came off. And once I started seeing the energy, right, and the way people were uh, rallying around the things, I even had like this one girl that I had like a crush on like way back in like middle school, high school. She was like my forever crush back in school. She she uh like commented on. That video was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, this is going to go viral. And I was like, even that was like a little inspiration. I was like, oh shit, okay. But that's so, what's up. Um, like, just little, just, just little random stuff at that time, man. Cause it wasn't supposed to be a business or anything like that. But. Mm-hmm. Man, that's, man, like, for, to, to kind of hear like how that, 
that whole thing transpired. And it really started from you doing tactics from the promotion of the festival. So would you say that, because I tell artists this all the time, and I tell people that actually want to work with artists this all the time, and I, and I tell them, there's no way you're going to learn how to be a manager. There's no way that you're going to be able to know how to market your music unless you have hands-on experience doing it. Like, you know, um, like just perfect example, like someone that's wanting to be a manager, like I say, hey, like you're going to have to know every, you know, every aspect of the business and you're going to have to do it hands on before you you get thrown into working with someone. So would you say that you're like one of the ways that it helped you kind of branch off and kind of learn the stuff that you uh, you've learned was because you were doing it hands on at first with the festival? Would, it, would, would you say that that's true? Yeah, man. I mean, because it wasn't even just the festival. I, like I said, I've been advising artists in one way or another for mm -hmm. a period of time, even before the festival came about. So mm -hmm. I've always been in and around it and doing it, whether it was small projects, just helping some friends or some other folks that heard about me. And then the festival, though, like that, especially a project on that scale, it just it just helped fine tune things. And I think it's better um, to be able to have certain experiences from different categories because then you can codify them into whatever you're going into, right? If you do True. decide to just settle on just marketing, you just settle on just management or whatever for a period of time, like all those experiences, especially in music, are transferable. Like festival, I got a, a sense of, you know, attitudes of artists were at, you know, um, mm -hmm. from a whole different point, right? Usually I'm just helping them and blah, 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 like blah, blah, blah. But now I get to see the other side where artists are looking at me as a lick and how they approach from that standpoint but then also the, the lack of professionalism for some so many artists and even bigger than that which really helped my my channel was just the perspective uh, that artists take right mm. so then i can see the things that they're lacking in or their the expectations they have versus the reality of what it's like you know what i mean exactly um, so i i was able to get fine-tuned on both sides definitely understanding the professional side definitely understanding this other this other side uh, because once i have those two and then i couple it with so my brother he uh, was a grammy nominated Right, mm. uh, we're just a part of a collective that was uh, they, they were Grammy nominated. Oh, that's what's and up. One thing that I learned was when I was because I was technically not even in music at this time. I would like I wouldn't take call myself in music. I was actually kind of trying to run away from it, but that's a whole another story. <laughs> uh, marketing okay. as well, but that yeah, like I said, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But when I heard he was nominated, right, mm -hmm. and he was still living the life that he was living i had to do some math mm. right but i was mm -hmm. adding things up just, just the way i think i'm very logical and i was like this don't make sense right exactly because based on the, the perspective you have growing up like you grammy nominated oh that's like life changing you you rich mm -hmm. oh you know whatever typical childish fantasies or things you might associate with a lot of those titles mm -hmm. and what i saw that you know like nah it, like, and it was ha it was lucky and fortunate for me to have that perspective before I even t went into it seriously because I was like oh man like this stuff ain't real you know what I mean I, on, on top of a lot of my experiences uh, working in just other projects and industries mm -hmm. and things like that so it was just like nah these numbers don't make sense I already understood heavily like like growth hacking with marketing how to uh, like completely measure what's true and what's not what's the source of like wh where the true impact is coming from so all those things I was just like yo a lot of this stuff that people think it is like this isn't this ain't right you know like how can I help people understand that y'all are far off you know, mm, like this, so the, the music business is the, in, in, in the entertainment industry mm. and the entertainment industry is all about you know the in front of the curtain and the behind the curtain yeah and all people see is is in front of the curtain like that that behind the curtain is a beast and that's what gets people messed up so true so that's so i'm glad you actually broke that down because that means that you had like that was that spark that kind of told you like hey like it's something's not adding up like what's what's happening so i'm glad you broke that down because i think a lot of people have a, a misconception and i think people especially obviously listeners like 
listeners have no idea how like most listeners don't have no idea how the music business works and then there's a lot of yep. artists that come in and they don't know how the music business works and they and you know what's crazy is and i know you experience this a lot you might meet with an artist that has been in the game for i won't say been in the game but like you know have has been recording and releasing music for years but they don't know how publishing works or they don't know how certain things work so it's kind of crazy mm-hmm. how misinformed uh both people on the outside and in are uh, with, within the game sure. um, so i want to ask you i want to ask you something um what's one of your biggest frustration with artists today Ooh. Because I know you, uh, you, you actually talk with a lot of artists all the time. So it's like I know that there's some a common thread that frustrates you about how they think or what they do. What's one of those things uh, that you would say that uh, frustrates you the most about about uh, artists coming up today? I would say entitlement, mm. and especially not knowing and being able to see their own entitlement, which mm. makes it even worse. Exactly, so, man. That. You know what? When I was when I was thinking about that question, I didn't even like that's not one of the first things that I thought about. But man, you're right. That is crazy. So, so, yeah. so tell me, like, because I know on your I, I was looking at your YouTube channel and I, and I saw that, like, you were very adamant about not managing artists. Like, what's one of the things that would that that's that's kind of shine you away from managing artists? Um, one. That's just a lot of responsibility, straight up, mm-hmm. to, to take over somebody's life. That's that's what it essentially is. You're mm-hmm. you're a, a parent, or like oh, you wouldn't you know? Well, no. Unfortunately, many managers end up becoming a parent. That's true. Right? You're right. Like, and that comes from some of those other things, and and, and the entitlement with artists. As a matter of fact, I have a perspective on that. I'll get to that in a second. But Ooh. um, so but like just having to really push people along right some artists are being dragged over the finish line this is supposed to be your dream this is supposed <laughs> to be for you and now you, you knew you need to push you every step of the way you don't want to work you just want to be in a studio and a lot of that becomes from them not understanding that it's so much more than their talent mm-hmm. right um so that's that's one perspective just from from that mm-hmm. um but then literally just the responsibility of it right and and me not feeling that personally i'm not in a position where I can even do that where I can count on you. Like, yeah. I see somebody I really, 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 really know, count on, like, I like, and believe in and understand that work ethic through and through, probably like a childhood friend more than anything mm-hmm. for me to have done something like that just because, like, not only am you, are you putting all this trust on me to oversee your life, I'm really, especially if this is how I'm starting and to come, and like, if I my come up, I'm putting everything on you too. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's just a a tough relationship to me. So it would have to be so 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 right. And I also believe what I can. There was a path that I started to take that was very management oriented. And um, also like label uh, exact opportunity oriented. But then I started to recognize the opportunity for what I'm doing right now. Exactly. Right? The YouTube and and that other side, and it makes so much more sense for who I am, how I think, and being able to impact multiple people at scale and provide resources and connections and, and proper information as opposed to just holding on to one situation. Because also, once I start down that path, in a lot of ways, like certain offers or, or jobs, like that just creates a certain conflict of interest, right? I can't, right. can't be working for this place and then dropping all these videos a day talking about such and such and be like, yo, like, bro, what you doing? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, like, that created a space as well, honestly, but um, but yeah, like, just back specific to the management, it's like that with the artist, uh, like that whole trust relationship um thing, and even that, outside of that, just, I would love to have more of a sense of my own system. I always say, maybe... For one, if I had kids, like once I go through that, I might it might make it easier for me to <laughs> like have an artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might be more trained in that mentality. Um, but then even bigger than that, like continuing to build, right, and be patient with my own path and career where maybe one day I might run into a talent and then I'm like, yo, I really believe in this talent. 
you know, maybe fact check them a little bit, make sure that they got a, got the character and all those things in place. But then say, you know what? I'm in a place where I know such and such. I know such and such. I know such and such. I I, I have such and such amount of money. You know what? Let me guide this situation, maybe at least up until this point. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. So, got you, got there's, you. There's various ways to do that. And I could still not do that without being a manager, right? True. There's these, it's, it's like the professional world in general there's all these set paths there's been and not only did it not match up with my personality uh, once i started to get a feel for it because i've been around some really dope dudes in mm -hmm. terms of like managers i'm like oh this is a manager like when you see a dope one that lets you know like ah nah am i gonna am i gonna be like this am i gonna be dedicated nah that's not me but i do this thing as much or even more than he would do so mm -hmm. like and i'm all about finding my space but yeah, like understanding that traditional path that was in the industry is not just for artists; it's for the professionals as well. They don't—I mm -hmm. don't think it's talked about enough on the professional side that it's just as open for the professionals to do whatever they want to do and pave new lanes as it is for the artists. You're 100 percent so, right. Um, yeah, that's that's one thing, and and really just to bring it back full circle because I know I mentioned I would touch on this earlier. Mm -hmm. Part of that whole entitlement that artists have mm -hmm. i truly believe is only a symptom of really the industry itself the industry made it that way it enabled artists to have a certain type of behavior and be entitled and and to um like feel like you suppo you're supposed to serve me when you're the entertainer you're supposed to serve your audiences right it's not all about you yeah so yeah yeah you feel like it's all about them right because that's that same mentality Right. that kept them from wanting to seek other things like ownership in their own stuff mm -hmm. right we en we enable them we soothe them so now they're in a space where they're good their whole world feels like it's about them until the money runs out and they realize the label controls everything the label has all the access to the data to the fans the label you know what i mean like, like has the the ongoing royalties and income or or the majority of it right they've been doing all the business while we've been having you out here thinking it's all about you you're enabled and like that that environment i think was very beneficial mm, for the yeah, old industry. yeah i you know what I, speaking for, for you to actually say that like it, that's kind of what's crazy is is that because i'm in, in the business in, in a, in a, and I have a certain kind of viewpoint on things. And it's dope to kind of hear that because I really never thought about that. Like, I never thought about how you like, you know, and I agree with you. I think um, there's a lot of things that happen or, you know, the industry, it did allow, you know, as far as it, it, it to actually happen that way, this way. So I want to get I'm going to I'm going to get some more of your takes on this. Uh, we're gonna go into uh, into into the mix, and uh, tell me real quick what, what's what's something some uh, some music that you're listening to right now. Ooh, I hate this question. <laughs> <laughs> I always forget about folks. Um, well, just to, just tell me, just tell me the you, last. Yeah, the last thing you I'll, listen I'll, to. I'll, I'll, I'll say that the, the last artist that I. I heard recently that struck a chord with me with an artist by the name of Yellow Pain, Y E L L O Pain, and he mm. has he has a couple of songs uh, worth, worth checking out. Okay, 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 that's what's up. Okay, it's good to know because like obviously you're 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 when when you're on when you're on, when you're on, when you're on YouTube, you're you're very unbiased. So it's like you don't you you actually mention uh, artists in a case study type of a scenario, but never on the music side so i'm gonna get some more of your music yeah, taste no. when we get back you're tuned in to the crib on dash radio we got brand man sean in the building we'll be back with him after this mix let's go and we are back in the crib we're still talking with brand man sean he he's he's dropping knowledge and i and i hope the artists that's tuned in um i hope they actually are really kind of soaking it in and then obviously anybody that's unfamiliar with your channel to go check out the interviews and all of the uh, the content that you actually have on your on your YouTube channel. Uh, speaking of interviews, I want to ask you about the interviews because you've had like a lot of dope interviews. Uh, mm -hmm. Wendy Win Day, uh, you've been interviewed. Um, you it, it's 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 so many people that it, that that I've actually been able to kind of get so much information from, and so many people that I've I, I've never heard of before, but 
you know, that I was able to actually get knowledge from. So tell me some of your favorite, mm -hmm. uh, just a, just a few of your favorite interviews and maybe some like uh, something that they one of the gems that they dropped. One of the interviews was TJ Chapman, that's mm. B.O.B.'s manager. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also manages Trap Beckham. And one of the gems that I really enjoyed in that interview was actually just him talking about diversity, B.O.B.'s diversity. Mm -hmm. And the reason I enjoy that so much is because, man... I hear every single artist always talking about they want to be diverse these days. I'm diverse. I want to be like this and that, and and that's just who I am. I, like because now it's become a cool thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like to be, I listen to everything. I don't like you know everybody thinks that it's not true of like for like 99.9 percent of people, but everybody thinks that and desires to be that. But I always try to paint the picture of just from a business standpoint, a logical, practical standpoint. It's hard to just come out the gate be diverse. And even if you do, it creates a lot of struggles. So uh, TJ, having B.O.B. as an artist, one of the most truly diverse artists, not saying that other artists don't have the ability, but on a large scale of success in, mm -hmm. in multiple different like type sounds and categories, he walked through really how B.O.B. can't win a lot of times. Mm -hmm. When it comes to dropping a song, mm -hmm. like one part of his audience will hate it. At least one part of his song uh, audience will hate every single song, mm -hmm. like come at it hard, because it's so they're so diverse, mm -hmm. right? Because he, he has these songs where he built audiences around these different songs, and it makes it hard to maneuver in some ways. Where you know you have your favorite artist, and they might have a song sometimes where it's like, oh, they doing that other thing over there. I'm not feeling that, or this song ain't for me. But literally, Bill B is going back and forth between both sides of his fan base thinking he's a sellout you know yeah, what I mean? like exactly. that extreme and exactly. really i mean there's more than just two sides to his fan base so just really the fact that he was able to like for real paint it out like use case wise this is what how hard it is on that end that that was interesting uh and then ryan leslie when i interviewed yeah that him, was a big one yeah yeah that was dope and i i love when it comes down to it I'll just, I just say I love the fact that he talks about the power of relationships connections the fact that he thought he was supposed to be you know this, this most talented musician there was in the world you know what I mean on some prints playing 27 instruments type stuff and that was why he got so good he thought that was the way to get in but then he realized music wasn't, wasn't a meritocracy mm -hmm. right that's a part of that escaping from the childhood fantasy of what it's like you know what I mean and realizing that you know there's talent that's a portion of it but it's the music business so there's a, a capital portion of it there's a, a connections portion of it and then just handling the business from the execution team portion of it that really encompasses the whole thing but so from realizing that and then realizing the value of relationships and he has a formula where he basically speaks on the the uh the potency of a relationship depends on two things which is proximity and frequency which is simply how close am i to you right like physically yeah right how often do i see you physically and then how often do we come in contact right mm -hmm. like how close are we and how often do we come in contact of course because of technology you can hack some of that through like oh we just we text often or we talk on the phone every day we facetime some of that but even if you think about how many relationships you gain just because you work together or you went to school together you but they normally probably wouldn't have happened right true um and the fact that he's building technology around keeping that experience at scale mm -hmm. that's interesting uh, and I like and I love the fact that he kind of broke it down into a formula because it's so relevant. It's one of those things we sleep on and it just sounds good. It's cli it's like cliche, the power of relationships and things like that. Mm -hmm. The value to people around you, your network is your network. All that stuff is cliche. However, cliches get repeated a lot because cliches have some truth in it and people tend to ignore the common sense truths because execution is the hardest part so i so love true. the fact that he broke that down into this, 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 this concise formula most definitely so i want to i want to talk to you about the brand man network now like as far as the so i want to i want you to tell the the listeners what the brand man network is and the benefits of, of joining the network. All right, so number one, 
Brand Man Network is a platform that connects artists with the community and resources to help them develop their brand and build their fan base. Those are the two primary things that's the focus. We want to help you get your brand fine-tuned. Like if your brand, we have one workshop in there where all right, if you don't have a brand, it's going to get you like nice, real nice. If you already have a pretty dope brand, I guarantee you your brand will still be sharper coming out of the uh, other end of that workshop. And then the rest of it is also, once again, helping provide tools and resources to actually help them build a print of a fan base, right? Mm -hmm. Like for real, practically real fan base. And we do that in a few ways, right? We have the workshops, as I talked about, right? And even just some hardcore like courses, because we want to help them be able to do this for themselves. Mm -hmm. The new age, right? Has all these independents coming up and for an independent to be able to, be successful they're going to need a couple of things which is pretty much the same thing even going through a label would, would need uh, uh artists would need which is connections capital and proper information mm -hmm. right and of course as an independent you don't have access to the label which can ex expedite your connections right though the label you borrow connections you borrow capital basically all those things that you need you even borrow information True. so we're providing those things where like hey man like if you have a team your team needs to sign up and everybody needs to be on the same page have access to this information because your marketing guy needs to know how to market music specifically on facebook ads and we have okay we got that we got facebook ad course we, we're building out the youtube one right now um but it's not just even those general courses like i said they're specific workshops and i promise you this is different than a course this is different than watching youtube videos like if you can watch two years of my youtube videos or, or just random information online mm -hmm. and you probably wouldn't make as much progress as four months going through these uh workshop series all right so it's, it's guided versus i watch a youtube video and i'm trying to take in this random information i'm trying to figure out where this this tip works in my own process we help guide you through a more specific process and even help um, provide some systems. That's mm. another thing. And then, so so you have that, the course slash workshop. You have some private videos that can't be online because sometimes, you know, people just can't talk about certain stuff on a YouTube level. Exactly. Or then there's some other things that are just exclusive because it's easier to go deeper in that platform versus YouTube where sometimes you honestly have to talk about some trivial things just to keep people's attention um and then one of the um best things most valuable things are weekly q and a's with real people right hopping on calls and you can talk to me uh currently uh, so like you, you know a little bit about me right I've, I've worked with artists in several um you know yeah i worked in artists in multiple genres and i i got some like a tech background help build mm -hmm. some companies to the point where they're they get millions raised in capital and things of that nature I just just helped not not the guy but yeah. uh and then you have people like currently a guy who goes by the name of Corey the savior that's his online um his instagram right mm -hmm. Corey the saver and Corey, digital marketer spot spotify playlist expert uh has clients a festival uh, co-founder one of the founding members doing doing his thing heavily as well these are people that do it you have Russ B uh, he's no longer at Island Records but he was at Island Records for a good minute has, has been at uh, Def Trent Jam he's the GM of Rap Fest and he's doing some account management for big social media for some pretty big artists right now nice. um, so these are like real people that you get to talk to and that's just currently and, and at the beginning of the network we aren't even that deep in there you're going to there's going to be a lot of other people you have resources coming real soon whether it's resources they're offering to the network that you'll have access to for free all these things or whether it's um them actually being uh someone you can talk to from a call right there's, there's a there's so 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 much come coming into the network we're only like five six weeks out uh, to be honest mm, and there's nice. a, but then there's so many things i can't talk about completely just for because sure. You know, you got to get things on, on the dotted line, but there's a lot of value coming into the network. And this is the way I like to look at it. Just I, I, I talked about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to summarize it. You have a video space, exclusive videos, 
trust me, they're they're not just regular I'm on YouTube videos. They go deeper or they touch on things that you don't hear people touch on in other places, um, including me on my YouTube channel. Consultations, basically, with the live Q and A's where you hop on, you can talk to people like you and get in context. It's not like I'm typing in my YouTube comment and hoping they answer my question and they don't even know how deep my situation goes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about hey, play your music, pull up your Instagram profile. All right, what's going on? What did your manager say? What's going like? And we we go back and forth for real, for real, video chat style. Uh, and then and the courses space alone has a, an extreme value because it's guided and it's, and, and it's touching on these Facebook courses and things like that that people charge thousands for but going all the way back to just the consultation piece alone right right now I'm going for about $350 mm -hmm. just to be transparent exactly right mm -hmm. um, and, and I was doing this discounted for a period for like $100 mm -hmm. right and even if you want to go to that low right $100 is for an hour and what you might have this happened to one artist we got on a consultation essentially um real dope guy love what he had going on he was part of a brand session too and we went through all this information and got his plan right but then probably like two three days after the call he had a big company reach out to him mm. and you know, he wanted to know what, what was up and blah, blah, blah. But he didn't have the money for the consultation. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so, and because stuff can change so fast. For sure, for it sure. It can change so fast. New opportunities for a newer artist. More important than just a one-off call. Because, you know, when you have so many things that you need to do, like, they, like it, there's just too many factors. and too much stuff that can change things. More important than just one one-off call. Not to say that one, a one-off consultation has no value. It definitely yeah. can for sure. But more valuable than that is ongoing guidance. So for instead of a hundred dollars for one hour, mm -hmm. right? We get five months of access to brand and network for that same price. Mm -hmm. And in that five months, you can talk to Sean weekly, you know, brand man Sean weekly. You can talk to uh Russ B, Corey, and like multiple times. This artist in five weeks I've probably been on seen them in like 10 12 calls already like leveraging and i can't be, i can't be mad at them you know using the resources and, and using them as much as possible and they're giving it to me every single thing and i can keep updating oh man since this last time we talked this happened right i couldn't do that for uh for like a cheaper price exactly so like for on a one-off basis i couldn't talk to a lot of people on a one-off basis because it wouldn't it just wouldn't make sense or be worth my time mm -hmm. but this is about how do i create an environment where artists can get as much support and much access as possible, right? Without it not being a charity. You get what I'm saying? Exactly. No, I totally get you. And and, and this is this is dope. So so question. I just want to get just so because I know there's going to be a lot of artists that are going to, uh, you know, uh, ask about the actual payment structure. So is the payment structure for the Brandman Network a monthly? Can they pay by the year? Can they pay by 10 months? Like, how does that the, the payment structure work? Right now, it's only available in monthly payment structure. Got it. Uh, looking, you know, by the time some people get on and check it out, it might be a year and monthly. That's the whole. The, the goal is to add a yearly um, payment structure as well just in case people want to do that. And of course, you know, usually the yearly payment structure, it gives a little bit of discount off the, the uh, monthly price as a whole. Mm -hmm. But right now it's just monthly as of this conversation. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So most definitely. So this is my thing. My Anybody, any, any artists listening out there, like there is a lot of value what Sean is bringing. Like, and to be honest with you, I don't know anybody off the top of my head that is doing what Sean is doing. So, you guys make sure you head over to brandmannetwork.com to to check this guy out. Because, I mean, what you're doing is so valuable because and that's kind of why I wanted to have you on the show, too, because I wanted to know because I get a lot of people in my DMs saying, you know, they want to get a shot. They want, you know, um, they, they want to have have me hear the music. They want me to manage them. They want me to do whatever. But it's it's one of those things where it's just like I don't really don't have the time, you know, to, uh, you know, 
have a situation where I can work with everybody. I want to work with as many talented people as possible, but I don't have the opportunity to do so. So I think what you're doing is 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 dope because you understood that okay, you know what these these one-off consultations aren't really and and you know what's crazy is you could have kept doing the exact same structure with the consultations and I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you actually switched it up because you want to help more people and you want to be more of a help instead of being a situation where it's just, you are just taking people's money. You know, like, I'm not saying that you weren't yet, that you, that, that that's what you were doing before, but you want to help as many people as possible and spread it out. Am I right? Hey man, look, you, you got some kind of intuition, man. Like you, you read that perfectly. Perfect. That, that, yeah. Because like, cause I could tell cause, and, and that means that Because like You know There's a lot of people In this business They're, they're sleazy They're they're like They just ab- are about the money And I could tell It's not about Just the money with you It's it, You're really You really care About the art Of the music You really care about Just You know Everything overall So it, it, it Like People gotta understand That you know, People like you In this industry Is Is few and far between like there's there's not really a huge amount of there's not a lot of people in the business like you you know because like there's a lot of people that they they come in they come out and you know they just really in it for that quick book because they see how much money is coming in the game um so with that being said man i I hats off to you I, i have a i have another question for you before we go um what's one of the things that you think is going to happen in the industry three years from now or you know that's coming that hasn't come yet but what's one of the things that that are that's in the industry that people should be looking out for right now hmm. all right so there's multiple facets of this all right so one and i should be able to say this part pretty short and sweet is just the rise of the middle class artist mm-hmm. or the, the livable wage artist mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. already here in some sense but i think it hasn't really calcified in people's minds that being an artist doesn't necessarily mean being rihanna or being some big star being yeah. a millionaire Correct. we're now because of all these resources and the lower overhead and the access we're now going to have a lot of artists that I mean, they're making $30,000 a year, $50,000 a year as an artist. And from so many people, that's a failure. But, you know, my question is, if would you rather be an artist making $50,000 a year or would you rather be doing some job that you hate for $50,000 a year or $60,000 a year? True. Right. So that's one thing that's going to change. Uh, People, artists are really going to start to take on that mentality. And some of uh, some of them are going to actually accept that mentality and even start thinking of it as a way of, okay, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm a livable wage artist. But then, of course, just like a regular professional career, you start to work your way up, though. Say, okay, I, I'm working this job. I got entry level. But by year 10, you know, I want to be the CEO or I want to be an exec. So a lot of artists will say, okay, I'm going to focus on this first level. I'm good with this regardless, but I still want to try to figure out how to move my way up. But that, in some ways, will create a sense of a bubble at least mentally in, exactly. in the industry just from an artist standpoint um now i don't know how much it'll affect the actual industry actual industry i don't that uh yeah i don't i don't know right uh particularly when you talk about the more formalized label and all that stuff i think mm-hmm. they'll be good but from just the mentality of a lot of these people who are wanting to be an artist just to be an artist or they think it's cool you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like there'll be a bubble burst p- more personally, individually. So it won't hurt the industry, I don't believe, as much. But it will hurt. I'll, you'll start to see a lot of individuals, kind of like this other dude, who, well, you know, where it comes out, oh, you were getting money from this and you weren't an artist. You were, you were, you know, supposedly, allegedly scamming money and things like that, mm-hmm. right? Um, to to push your career along. So it'll be a lot of people, or and even influencers in general, where it's like their life is not adding up with what they think it should be or other people think it should be and that that part will be exposed on the Mm -hmm. other end because of this more formalization and professional outlook that a lot of artists have and as the industry starts to mature there's going to be 
more formalized structures on the independent end serving them, not just from a distribution standpoint, but even things like brand and network artists will be more comfortable with the idea of paying for their education Mm -hmm. outside of school, which is just a more, you know, that's like a whole different game that's being sold to artists, Mm -hmm. right? But they, when artists think about music, they say, oh man, you know, I see these artists popping, they're blowing up and they're doing it off of uh, a viral video which obviously we know that a lot of these videos are are viral by design mm-hmm. um, not by just luck Correct. but artists will stop thinking and seeing that they'll start to say you know what I, I'll invest in my education this way in the same way I would invest in the school and that's part of the reason for Brand Man Network right there'll be more of things similar in that direction there already are some like in, that are similar or serving different audience in different pockets mm-hmm. right but artists aren't really ready for it yet because i hear artists all the time saying if i can get this information out here for free like what's the point of doing this other thing but exactly. you don't know if that information is quality mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah, or you're right or this information is surface level it's, it's even if it's deep you don't know how to apply it to yourself yeah you, know, you need guidance what's applicable to you like me reading about like all these books on how to be a ceo and i don't have a business is irrelevant you know what i mean like mm-hmm. or me or, or all these things on operations but i'm doing marketing and branding over here and i'm not involved in that it's irrelevant it's just like okay now you know a lot of stuff but you can't move or anything and apply it to yourself so you, you more structures that help artists do that at scale i think will come um because it's something that's needed especially when you talk about the education system education traditionally college they don't serve artists that's true they, they don't serve artists right at all like these music things uh business courses and things like that if anything those are more designed for the a music exec mm-hmm. right or i want to go mm-hmm. work at a label and from a worker side than true. an artist true. side especially a rapper side no there's no college i guarantee you trying to figure out how to build out their curriculum to better the lives and, the, and, the, and increase the su- chances of success for a rapper. You get what I'm saying? A hundred percent. hundred percent. hundred percent. Man, yeah, you're, yeah. you're a hundred percent right. Last thing, I, like, it, it's crazy because, like, we could, and I think I might have you have to have you come back on the show again just to kind of drop some more gems, uh, especially once, uh, you know, you, once the website gets a lot more steam and so forth. Question. What, sure. What's one piece of advice that every artist needs to understand if they're really trying to be serious in this business what's the one piece of advice you could give to somebody right now before they jump on brandmannetwork.com to actually sign up what's one of the pieces of advice you got for them Ooh, i would say nobody owes you anything hmm Nah, that man, that's a good one. I, I say that not to be like general, like general or, or sound good. I, I say this because truly, as an artist, I promise you, it would apply to you in many situations where you reach out to somebody and you think that they should reply. It starts to feel a certain way. Mm-hmm. And trust me, this happens to everybody in the industry period at some point and probably still having the people that you think are successful that are reaching out to people or try or or think or have some expectations of people and is the actions or what's happening isn't aligned with that and a lot of times that slows people down what you have to do is at sometimes to get to get to the point where you know i'm gonna keep moving forward regardless and not not over index on what i think other people should do for me not only because you know, you need to be self-reliant and all that stuff. But a lot of times, people get in their feelings, and I and, I'm, and I say this as in I feel it all the time too. I get it. Where you know, you send out an email. That's that simple scenario, mm-hmm. and you think somebody's gonna reply. You feel like somebody's ignoring you, or you feel like oh, someone saw your DM. But there's so many honest cases. I know I do it to people where I might be look. I might open up a DM. Oh man, that question is way deeper than I thought. I don't got a quick chance, chance to answer that, and then. You know, you know, now not, when I go back to my DMs, I got another fifty other DMs, and I'm doing all this other stuff in my life, and I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's nothing personal. I just don't remember. I miss it, or yeah. I'm trying to get back to you, and I, like there's there's so many things that aren't personal to you, and but we personalize a lot of stuff because ego, that insecurity. So if you just remember that people don't owe you anything in the first place, it'll help. Most like I'll, I'll say that I had one situation. I'll just say this: 
last thing in, in relation to that. Mm-hmm. I had one situation where I was like, yo, this girl is super dope. She's doing her thing. Um, and she's not even like an artist, but she's in the, music, the industry. She does like interviews and things like that. I'm like, she's been killing it. I mean, she's been consistent for so long too. Mm-hmm. And she hasn't even blown up to like a huge scale yet, but she's mm-hmm. still doing it. And I just wanted to reach out to her and let her know how dope I thought she was. Mm-hmm. I go into my D, well, to DM her. And when I DM her, I see she messaged me like two, three months prior asking if she could chop it up and like interview me mm. and i'm like oh snap like i like i missed out on her dm you know what i mean and i don't i hope she's not in her feelings or anything about that because mm-hmm. i know how that goes exactly because i'm literally reaching out because i think she's dope and i don't even know that she already tried to reach out to me that you know? is crazy it happens all the time though like way it does. more You're right either like it, it just happens all the time going both ways so it's hard 100%. to that that ego thing is your most vulnerable thing when it comes to moving and dealing with so many people. Man, that's that's some valuable uh, advice for, for for the folks, man. Like like I said, man, it's it's definitely a pleasure chopping it up with you. Uh, you know, I could I, I I always get a sense of people that are coming at this business, um, you know, with with a genuine heart and not really coming in like, oh, how how much money can I make? How much money can I make so I can kind of do the next thing? So I, I my hat's off to you, man. And like I said, I, I want to continue to support what you're doing. So please keep me in the loop with everything that you got going. Whenever you're about to launch the next arm of your uh, of your business, let me know. Sure, I would sure. love to have you come in to talk to the people. Because like I said, I have a lot of artists that actually fought, listen to the show because they want to. I have to get their music played or whatever the case may be. And I think this information is going to be super, super valuable for them, man. So thank you so much for actually coming on the show. Um, any Anything that you want to tell tell the people? Okay. Hey, well, first, one small thing, that thing you say about delivering with, you know, a genuine heart, I appreciate that because I definitely try to approach things that way and not just being out for the, for the bag. For sure. I can say I'm not about not like you know i am about getting my money i believe everybody should be accountable for sure. and treated fairly more important than just the genuine heart is the ability to like okay say so if i'm gonna do this for you i'm gonna deliver on it for you exactly. and do it with integrity i might be doing it just for the money but if i do it i'm gonna do it do it right that's more important we need more of those people in inch in life in general when it comes to following me brand man b-r-a-n-d man m-a-n you can find me on my youtube channel i encourage you heavily to check out brandmannetwork.com the goal is not just to get the information but also see how you can apply the information to you execute that information and actually change the level that you're at with that information and that's an alignment with what we're trying to do and help artists with in brandmannetwork.com so go check that out and other than that you'll find everything else that i'm connected to through through those things man like I said, thank you so much for stopping by the crib. You guys have been listening to the crib. If you are an artist and you found uh, this information uh, valuable, make sure you hit them up. Let them know. Uh, you know, if you get up in his DMs, don't be mad if he don't respond quickly. Uh, but just make sure if you really want that one on one contact, make sure you sign up and join brand man network like i can personally vouch for it because i you know for somebody that's been in the business uh, for as long as i have i don't know everything but i know when people know what they're talking about and sean does so make sure you guys check him out once again thank you so much sean for for stopping by as far as on the crib and giving us giving us a call we really appreciate it and you've been tuned in to the crib on dash radio let's go remember check us out every sunday we're at a new time uh, we're on at Eastern Time, 9 p.m., and we're on Pacific Time, 6 p.m. So make sure y'all check us out every Sunday. With that being said, let's go. Ow.